When it comes to hosting your web application, there are literally dozens of ways of doing it, but today we'll break down only one of them that's really easy to set up and free to try. Today we'll talk about Azure App Service, and I'll show you how easy it is to release a Blazor server application to production through Visual Studio, through Azure App Service Deployment Center, and finally, if you're a bit more technical, which I know you are, we'll set up a DevOps CI CD pipeline that will release automatically to production every time we push to main. So let's get coding. But before we get into it, why should you care about Azure App Service? Why would you choose it over other ways of hosting your web application? Say, hosting it in VMs or Docker containers. And you're actually right, maybe you're more familiar with some of those methods. But here's the thing, many times that's infrastructure as a service. Say, for instance, hosting your application in virtual machines. You not only have to take care of the code, that actually brings business value and subsequently money to your business, but you also have to take care of the infrastructure. That means the compute resources, the storage, the networking, the security patches, the OS updates, and all of that that's on you. It is true, this provides a lot more flexibility and uh, some cost advantages. And if you're in a lift and shift situation, meaning you want to move your on-premises infrastructure up to Azure, then yes, that might be the perfect solution for you. But in scenarios where you don't need or want to mess about with the infrastructure, then Azure App Service might actually be the perfect choice for you. Okay, but what exactly is Azure App Service and what are its main benefits? Let's talk about that. Azure App Service is a platform for hosting web applications, mobile backends, REST APIs, or Azure Functions. To create an app in Azure App Service, you need an Azure Service Plan, and that's the unit that represents your application. An App Service Plan specifies the operating system, the region, the instance size, that's small, medium, or large, the scale count, meaning the number of VM instances that your application can scale up to, and the SKU or the pricing tiers that can be free, shared, premium, but more on that in a minute. In terms of the main benefits, it provides 99.95% SLA, which translates to 43 seconds of downtime per day, or five minutes a week, or less than 22 minutes of downtime per month. It releases very fast and it's got zero downtime releases, but I'll show you what that actually looks like in a moment. It's also got a feature called deployment slots or staging slots. These are separate environments that you can deploy to for testing or staging purposes, then simply swap those with production slots, but these are available with the more premium tiers. For context, there are three main pricing tiers. We've got shared, dedicated, and isolated. The shared one includes the free and shared tiers, the dedicated one includes basic, standard and premium tiers, and the isolated one obviously contains only the isolated tiers. They differ in terms of the CPU, the memory and the storage, but also they've got a number of features as well, like auto-scaling, backups, staging slots or custom domains. Generally, the more you get towards the isolated tiers, the pricier the plan actually gets. And we've got auto scaling. When you hear about auto scaling, all that actually means is automatic scaling. And Azure provides two types of auto scaling. We've got vertical scaling and horizontal scaling. Vertical scaling means scaling up or down. Scaling up is having more CPU, memory, and storage added to your instance. Horizontal scaling, on the other hand, means scaling in or out. Scaling out is having more instances attributed to your plan. And by instances, I mean managed virtual machines. You can imagine scaling up as having more and more hardware stacked on top of your computer to make it more performant, and scaling out can be represented by more and more PCs added next to each other. It integrates with Azure DevOps, which we'll demonstrate as part of this video, GitHub, Docker Hub, Bitbucket, and so on. It supports applications developed in the following languages and frameworks, c -sharp with .NET, .NET Core, PHP, Java, Ruby, Node.js, Python, and the list goes on. Authentication and authorization are baked within the platform itself, so no extra code or setup is required. It integrates with the major login providers such as Facebook, Google, or any OpenID Connect provider, and also with Azure AD. You could also set up your own authentication process should you need to. So here is the plan. We'll take a starter Blazor server application and we'll release it to production in three main ways. Firstly, we'll publish it through Visual Studio. Secondly, we'll deploy it through Azure App Service Deployment Center. And lastly, we'll set up a full-on CI-CD pipeline in Azure DevOps that will automatically release to our App Service instance every time we push to the main branch. To go through the rest of the tutorial with me, you need two main things. An Azure subscription, and if you don't have one, you can get that one for free in a few minutes. Just Google free Azure subscription, click on the Azure link, then start free button. 
And secondly, you need an Azure DevOps account. Again, if you don't have that already, Google Azure DevOps free, click the Azure link, scroll down to the uh, individual services and click start free. Okay, so let's switch over to Visual Studio and get our app started. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is go to portal.azure.com and uh, in here you can uh, click create, and, uh, create a resource or if you can see app services, click on it. Uh, otherwise, create a resource and then this will send you to a page uh, where you can choose your resource and this will be the uh, Azure web app, the web app right here. Click create. Choose a subscription and a resource group if you don't have one created give your app a name. This must be unique amongst the ones that are actually using the free tier. So whatever name you give to your application, to your Azure web app, uh, make sure that you keep a hold of that because we're going to use it throughout this tutorial. The publish type will be of code and the runtime stack will be .NET 6. I live in the UK, so I choose the uh, closest region to mine, but make sure that you choose the closest region to yours. And here in the pricing plan, it's really important that we change the size because by default, this assigns us the, the standard one. So if we go to the dev test, we need to select the shared one. So this one is free. We've got 60 minutes a day of compute completely for free. So these are the only two features that we get. And if you are happy with the changes and this says uh, free SKU unless you want it to be otherwise, then hit create. And just keep in mind that this will take a couple of minutes. But as soon as it's done, we can go ahead and uh, click on view resource, which is the actual web application. Okay, go to resource. And we are presented with the overview of our uh, web application. And as you can see, we've got a unique URL. Mine is cwjapp1.azurewebsites.net. And uh, Azure kindly provided us with a template website that we uh, have deployed already in, in place of our web application. So what we'll do now is switch over to Visual Studio and create our brand new web application. Okay, create a new project. This will be a Blazor server application. I'm just going to keep the names consistent. CWJ code with Julian app one, give it a path, hit next. This will be a .NET 6 application with no authentication and hit create. And here we are. This is the starter template of a Blazor application. Nothing new so far. So uh, let's hit control F5 and let's see the application on our local host. There you go. As you can see, we've got our application running at localhost 7061. So now what we need to do is publish our application on Azure. So to do that, we switch back to Visual Studio, right click on your project and go to publish. In here, we target Azure, Azure App Service on Windows. We choose our resource group. If you were to have deployment slots for the premium coming with the premium uh, tiers, then you would be able to deploy straight to those. But we're just going to publish to our production slot and hit finish. Okay, so a published profile has already been created. As you can see, it picked up my subscription, the resource group and the resource name. And it's also got the uh, URL, the unique URL of our uh, web application. And all we need to do now is hit publish. Give it a few seconds. And as you can see, it succeeded and it automatically opened up the website for us. So now we're live. Our application is successfully published to production. So now the second way of releasing your web application to Azure App Service is through the deployment center. So this is what we're going to do now. In order to do this, we'll need an Azure uh, repos repository. So if we head over to uh, dev.azure.com, click on the new project button, give your project a name and hit create. Okay, we need to head over to project settings, down to repos and enable the repos tab and refresh the page and you'll see that the repos appeared right here. Now this is an empty repository and we need to copy the URL in order to um, link up our uh, project in Visual Studio. And what we need to do in um, inside our project is go to add to source control, choose Git. And we've already got an existing remote because we've created that project and we paste in the URL that we've just copied create and push. So it will take all of this code and it will push it to our already existing remote repository. After it's finished committing and pushing all the changes, we can head over back to um, Azure DevOps. And as you can see, we've got all of our code right here. Okay, so now we are ready to set up CI CD through Deployment Center inside our Azure Web App. So we choose Azure Repos, we choose our organization, uh, the project, we choose the repo and the branch, which is uh, just main. So we hit save. Okay, so once that's done, you can see that the source is uh, set to Azure Repos. We can disconnect it if, if we want, which we'll do in a few minutes. And you can see the repository as being this. If we go to logs, it should have already started a uh, deployment, a release for us. And if we click on this, we can actually see some uh, log details. Okay, so 
once it's successful, then we can go ahead and uh, refresh our application and you'll see that um, everything is uh, as it was before, but actually this time we've deployed through deployment center. So why not make a change in the code? So right here, we're gonna change this to this, commit and push. Once that's done, we head back over to uh, the, the deployment center, we hit refresh, and this should already be picked up by uh, the deployment center and create a release for us. As you can see, running deployment completed. So now it's successful. So we can uh, click on browse and we can uh, hit the website. And as you can see, this is the updated version of my app. So this is how you can uh, do it through the deployment center. Lastly, we'll set up a build and release pipeline through Azure DevOps. Uh, before creating our CICD process in Azure DevOps, it is really important that we come back to the de deployment center uh, inside our web app and we click disconnect. It is really important that we do that, otherwise uh, the CICD pipeline will fail to release because this is already connected through the deployment center. So just click disconnect. So basically we'll leave this as it is and we'll uh, head over to uh, Azure DevOps. Now we have two submenus that we're going to work with. The pipelines, which is the actual build pipeline, and the releases, which is the actual release. The build pipeline builds your code and generates those artifacts. And the release pipeline is the one that actually takes those artifacts and deploys them to the necessary environments. So the first step in this process is to actually create the pipeline. We go to pipelines, create pipeline. We choose the Azure repo Git and it's already picked up the CWJ app one. And you could go ahead and uh, select from predefined templates, but uh, for now we're just gonna use a starter template and essentially delete everything because we're gonna define everything from scratch. The first three things here that we've got is trigger on main. So every time we push to the main branch, uh, this pipeline, this build pipeline will be triggered. Then in the pool, we've got the VM image, the virtual machine that we want this to be built on is Windows and the latest version of Windows. And uh, we define a variable called build configuration uh, that's got the value of release. We'll use this in a second. So we define some steps and the steps contain some tasks that we're gonna define. And we have four total tasks. The first one is running the NuGet restore. So it restores all the dependencies. Currently we don't have any dependencies, but it's still good to have this task right here for when we'll have some in the future. The second one is running the .NET build. So basically it uh, takes our code and builds it the same way we would do it in Visual Studio. The third task is actually grabbing our build code and publishes it to uh, the output that we're defining in here. So whereas the previous task published the project uh, to the build output and uh, zipped the contents, uh, this one actually takes the artifacts, the outputted artifacts, the ones that have been published in the previous step and uploads them to be ready for release. And we hit save and run. And it's been queued, so if we go down into it, we're actually gonna see the tasks that we've created. So we just wait for it to um, go through and execute each one of them. Okay, so ideally, if you followed the tutorial step by step, uh, you should have uh, the same result as mine. So the next step is we've got the uh, build pipeline. Now we need to create the release pipeline. So if we go to releases, we create a new release pipeline. And here we select the Azure App Service deployment. Deploy your application to Azure App Service. We hit apply. We close this. So we go into the stage tasks. And in here, we need to find our subscription. So I'm just gonna click authorize and go through and authorize this. Give it a minute to load. Okay, as soon as it's been authorized, then we go and we select our app service. And we're done with this part. So we hit save. Okay, and we go back to the pipeline. Okay, now we need to create an artifact. So essentially, what are we releasing on? So we're releasing on a build and we need to select the source. So this is the build pipeline that we've just created. The artifacts that we're pu we've published with the build pipeline, we're picking them up here and we're releasing. And we click add. As soon as we've done that, the last step is to actually define the trigger. So what will trigger this? And I'm gonna say it will be triggered by the build. So enabling the trigger will create a new release every time a new build is available. So that's what we want the build pipeline to run. As soon as it runs, it will trigger the release. And we close out at this one, we hit save. So now let's rerun the pipeline. We go to pipelines and click on it. And we click on run pipeline so that 
as soon as this finishes, it should trigger the release pipeline. Okay, this is done. We can go to releases and you'll see we've got a new release pipeline and no deployments found. But as soon as that finished and the release pipeline picked up that the build uh, has finished, then we've got a release auto generated for us. And don't worry, it will automatically go ahead and queue itself. It will start the release. And now it's deploying to Azure App Service. Now it's downloading the artifact from where we published it in the build pipeline. And now it's deploying. As you can see, if we refresh the deployment center within our web app, you will see the release right here. And it says deployed successfully to production. Hopefully, if you did everything like in this tutorial, step by step, you should see this exact thing. And now we can actually browse and see the website that's been updated. There we go. So we've got the website up now. So as you can see that the interface has changed slightly because we've integrated it uh, with the um, Azure DevOps CI CD pipeline. If we make another change now, like this, and we commit the state changes and push, and now if we refresh the pipelines, we'll see that it runs it again because we've just pushed the change. As soon as this finishes, we can switch over to the releases, refresh, and there we go. We've got our second release. This is finished now, switching over here, refreshing the feed, and it's all been successful. If we browse, there we go. We've got our latest update with zero downtime. So this is what I mean by zero downtime releases is because it automatically releases the latest version of your app without any need for a downtime. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much it with today's tutorial. If you enjoyed, please hit like and subscribe to this channel for more content just like this. Until next time, stay safe.